All right, guys, so uh, we're changing things up a little bit here at Baja Kits and how we do our install guides. Traditionally, this is how you get an install guide for all of your kits. Something like this would be in the box. Uh, as much as we can, it's gonna take a little bit of time, but we're gonna transition from a printed copy to a video. Uh, today, for the first one, we're doing an F-150 pre-runner kit. This is a 2021 F-150. Uh, here's the stock parts, right? So this is completely stock. We're doing a pre-runner kit, which is an upper and a lower arm. So everything is coming off and we're putting all the new fancy stuff on with King Shocks. Come on over, check this side out. So here's the kit fully installed. And by the end of this video, you're gonna see how it goes from stock to a kit installed. Lower control arm, upper control arm, King Shock, steering extensions, brake lines, everything you need uh, and how to do it. So whether you're doing it in your garage or you're a dealer or a full professional shop. So before we get into it, we're gonna lay out all the tools that we need to get this pre-runner kit installed. Um, going down the line, you're gonna want an eight mil, a 10 mil, a 12 mil, a 13 mil, an 18 mil, a 19 mil, a 21 and a 24. You're gonna wanna use a clip removing tool. You can use a flat blade screwdriver, but it would benefit you to use a clip removing tool. For the sockets, you're definitely going to need an 18 mil, a 21 mil, uh, depending on if you can fit your impact in there or a ratchet, a 15 mil deep for your sway bar, um, various 10 mils on the frame, an eight mil for your IWEs. Uh, just in case, I would definitely have a T45 uh, Torx uh, for your sway bar, a flat blade screwdriver to take off that axle cap, a hammer, loosen everything up, uh, persuade things in. So you're also going to want to have a caliper hanger. You can use a bungee cord or whatever you need to, but I would definitely invest in one of those. You're going to need an inch and 16th socket for your lower control arm bolts. And then for various trimming, um, you'll see in the install, uh, you're gonna need an angle grinder with a flap disc. And that's all we need to install this pre-runner kit. At the spindle, there's gonna be two 21 mils that hold the caliper actually to the spindle. It's gonna be a 21 mil for the sway bar. And then we can get to our caliper bolts. Two 21 mils. You remove the two bolts in the back right and then you just hung the caliper? Yeah, and then I had this, this ABS sensor that is connected to the bracket that connects to the spindle. I just unclipped that. There's a 10 mil that holds it, the bracket into the spindle, took that out as well. So everything's free to move so you don't have any tension on the brake line or the ABS sensor. We can continue disconnecting the upper control arm, the tie rod, the lower control arm to take the spindle off so we can do some trim. So on the newer trucks, you're gonna have your IWE um, or your, your four-wheel drive lock hub. Um, it'll have a sensor connected to it and a vacuum hose. You're just gonna disconnect that from your brake line bracket using a clip removing tool. Then it'll be free. It's also connected to the frame, so you're just gonna trace it all the way up into the engine bay. After we've disconnected the, both the IWE sensor, vacuum hose, and the ABS sensor from the frame, we can go up into the engine bay and remove the clips from there and just pull them down. So here we got our ABS sensor and our IWE sensor, and you're just gonna pull this tab back like that and then press down. So there's that guy. And then this is the ABS sensor. We're just gonna go in there like the IWE sensor, pull that red tab back, press down, and it should come disconnected. From there, we can go back into the wheel well and pull these down and start removing the spindle from the truck. After we disconnected everything in the engine bay, we can kind of just snake these guys out. Pull them down, and you can just let them hang there while we remove the upper control arm, the tie rod, and the lower control arm. So it's gonna be a 21 mil to remove the tie rod from the spindle. Just gonna throw it on there. All right, so on your older trucks, um, obviously your tie rod's not gonna come out as easy. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna grab a hammer and you can bang right here and it should loosen up the tie rod to pull it out. 
So then the nut on the upper control arm is gonna be an 18 mil and you're just gonna take that off. And then just before you remove the upper control arm nut, you're gonna wanna put like a jack or something underneath the upright. Make sure it's supported because this will fall as soon as you remove it. Once the upright is supported, then you can remove this upper control arm nut fully and uh, you're gonna wanna be careful because it, if it's not jacked up, this guy is going to spring back up. Just like that. So again, with your 21 mil, you're gonna go ahead and grab the nut on the lower control arm and just remove it. Make sure that your upright is supported because again, it will fall if it isn't. So right down here, um, this guy is on there. So what we're gonna do, like similar to the tie rod on, on older vehicles, um, we're just gonna go ahead and tap right here, make sure that your nut is on so that when the spindle drops, it doesn't fall off. And our spindle's free. So with the axle, we're gonna use two pry bars and um, there is actually a specialty tool that Ford makes to get these axles out. They are press fit and you might need to put two pry bars behind it. In our case, I think I'm just gonna tug it out. This is a brand new truck, so should come out pretty easy. Then I'm gonna grab uh, my 18 on my impact and take off the two nuts on the bottom of the shock. So I'm gonna start removing the um, lower control arm pivot bolts. It's gonna be a 21 on the inside. And then um, I believe it's a 26 millimeter on the outside. If you, you don't have a 26 millimeter, you can get, use an inch and 16 socket and remove it. All right, from there, we're gonna remove the actual coilover. Uh, it's gonna be three 18 millimeters on top. And then obviously, once you get it out, you're gonna wanna have a hand underneath it. Keep the coil over from dropping. So we're gonna go ahead and remove the upper control arm. It's gonna be a 21 millimeter nut and a 18 millimeter bolt. So we'll go ahead and remove both sides. So on this install, we're actually gonna be removing the sway bar before we can put everything back on. In future, we're going to design a end link that connects up to the factory upright. Um, but for right now, we're gonna remove this one. So moving on to the other side of the truck, we're actually gonna remove the end link from this side so then we can remove the brackets and drop the sway bar. All right, so now that we're underneath the truck, we can actually remove this under tray. It's gonna be several eight millimeter bolts and we're just gonna remove them and drop it. After removing the under tray, we can use our 16 millimeter deep socket to remove these brackets and drop the sway bar. For this customer, we're actually just gonna throw these back on there just in case they ever wanna revert back to stock. Um, at least they have the hardware for the sway bar to go back on. Then we can throw our skid plate back up or our, our under tray back up underneath the truck. We got the upright on the bench right now. Before we can put it back in, we have to trim these ears down so that these don't touch the arm during full steering lock. Um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and remove the IWE. This is optional step. I'm gonna remove it, but what you are definitely gonna wanna do if you don't remove it is definitely put a rag in this area. You don't wanna get any shavings in the IWE. So if you did remove your IWE, we're just gonna put this guy back in. You're gonna wanna kind of be careful with these bolts. They, you don't have to go super crazy and tighten them down. Um, the IWE housing is actually plastic, so snug them down, don't go crazy, and we should be able to put this back in. Our next step is gonna be installing our lower control arm, and then we're just gonna let that thing hang down there while we go ahead and install the other parts. So our next step would be throw our axle in and we're actually just gonna let it rest on the lower control arm um, before we put our upright in. 
make sure to get the splines lined up and then boom there we go so now we're going to put our upright in so from the video if you couldn't tell um we actually put the axle into the spindle and then we went ahead and we got our taper all lined up from here we're just going to go ahead and remove this this 15 millimeter bolt and then we're going to sandwich the uh, resi mount in between now that we have our lower control arm our axle and our upright in we're going to go ahead and put our upper control arm in bolt it in and uh, we're just going to fold it up out of the way all right now that we have our upper control arm on uh, we can go ahead and slide our coil over up in there also to note uh, on the fords the resi hose actually comes out of the back by the shock bucket. Now we're gonna bolt in the upper control arm. You're just gonna put a 12 point half inch socket up top and then you can go underneath and go ahead and tighten this 19 or three quarter, depending on what you have. From there, we're gonna bolt in the axle. These axle nuts, it's a 13 millimeter, but you don't wanna go crazy on it. I'm gonna impact this in, but my, my impact is a, is a low impact. You definitely don't wanna crank on these because they will snap off. Now we're gonna put all the ABS sensor, um, the IWE hose and connector back up in the engine bay and we'll secure it. All right, so now that we got our upper, our lower, our coil over, which we're waiting on bolting in the resi, but now that we have all this in, um, we're gonna go ahead and start putting our brake assembly back onto the upright. Another tip I also really like to use is I, I like putting um, at least one lug on, on these floating rotors, just to keep it in place when I put my caliper back on. So I'm just gonna put this guy on and then my rotor is in place. So now we're gonna put the caliper in. We got some red Loctite on our uh, caliper bolt. We're just gonna throw it up on there. So now we're just gonna go ahead and put our steering extension on. Now that we have the kit on, it's a couple inches longer. So to extend the steering to fit, what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply red Loctite right here. And we're gonna basically just fuse these guys together. So you're gonna take your outer tie rod and your steering extension, get them together, butt down, no nut in between. That nut is gonna stay on the inner tie rod. A quick tip to get this uh, extension onto the outer tie rod is what I do is I put it into the upright you can just hand thread the the nut on and then what you can do is grab your 24 mil and just snug her down once our tie rod extension is snugged onto our outer tie rod we can just go ahead and thread it onto the inner tie rod and put it back onto the upright this is a 2021 it's got a little bit more stuff behind the front bumper um, which now is contacting our resi so we're just going to go in here and trim it out we'll show you on video where we're talking about and if you have this kit and you're putting it together you'll know exactly what i'm talking about when you go to put the resi in it actually does contact some plastic up here so we're just going to trim it out we're going to go ahead and put it up in and secure these clamps down when you're tightening these clamps for these resis you definitely do not want to crank down on them. There's a piston that travels inside the resi and it can crush the actual resi, causing that piston not to move back and forth. In our Baja kits pre-runner kit, um, we include extended brake lines. As you can see, um, this brake line is pretty taut uh, at full lock. This guy's gonna get really tight, put a bunch of stress on your brake line and you don't want that. First step is we're gonna go ahead and loosen this 13 millimeter. On this 2021, we're actually gonna loosen this 10 mil bolt right here. And then we can let our fluid land in our drip pan. So now we're just gonna grab our 12 millimeter wrench. We're gonna put it on the brake line that's attached to the caliper and take it off. Now we're assembling our brake line extension. We're gonna go ahead and put our new crush washers on the banjo bolt and thread it back into our caliper. So after we removed this bracket off of the factory brake line. We can go ahead and actually put this guy back up here, bolt it on, 
And now we have a location to actually secure our brake line. From there, you can start reattaching all of your IWE and ABS clips. All right, so now that we have our brake line hooked up to our, our adapter, we have it down here, bolted up to our caliper. We're just gonna go ahead and take an 11 mil and actually tighten the hose. One of the last steps that I always do is uh, the brake line because once everything's in, then you can get an idea of where you need to keep this brake line away from. So um, we have our secure point right here. We have the bracket right here that we're probably going to give this guy a little pinch just to hold this brake line in place. And uh, we're probably gonna route it about like that. All right, so we got our Baja kits, pre-runner kit all on. We got our upper, our lower coilover on and our brake line and steering extension on. This truck is actually gonna get a brake bleed. It's gonna get an alignment, wheels and tires, and uh, that's a wrap for this truck.